Welcome to a special Friday edition of the podcast, or maybe these should always be on Fridays so you can listen to them on route to your weekend wedding. Hopefully you're on your way to a wedding when you're listening to this, but if you're listening to it at another time, that's fine too. The reason that I wanted to put this out on Friday is because Imaging USA in Nashville is this coming week and we will be there. I'm going to put a link down below to a thing that I'm doing with Focal. You can come out, you can photograph some couples. We have some sets. We have a band, apparently. I'm getting updates on Slack about this, that I guess one of the couples, uh, their partner is at a band and they're going to come play some music for us. Well, we eat some pizza. So it's a pizza party. You get to take some pictures of couples in some cool places and you get to hang out. So link down below, that is on January 24th, 2023, Nashville at during Imaging USA. It's not an official event or anything. Let's talk about the topic of the day, which is why I'm shooting Sony more and more on wedding days. Maybe you noticed this. Maybe you didn't notice this. Over the past year, I'm going to say in January of last year was the first time that I used the A7 IV. And we went to Mexico, similar to this year. And I used it for about a week. And I enjoyed the experience. And then I came back and it was a loaner from Sony uh, USA. So I sent it back to them. I never really thought about it. And then at some point in the spring, I learned about that Tamron 35 to 150, which is a lens that the F2 to F2.8 version doesn't exist for any other system. It only exists for Sony. I was like, that sounds interesting. Maybe, maybe I'll give that a shot. And I used it and I very much loved it a lot. And I actually bought a Sony a7 IV because of that. And then ended up collecting a few of the primes that I typically use on a wedding day. I left the 85 out, which is a bit weird. So I shot 85 uh, in my Nikon days pretty much primarily as my main lens. I left that out. I went with the 50 and the 35. And then that Tamron 35 to 150 is kind of my main lens for the ceremonies for sure, as well as other parts of the day. Now the question is, will I be using Sony this coming season? Because there are a few limitations currently, at least with the offerings out there. And they make my workflow a little bit challenging as a hybrid photo video creator. And that limitation right now, at least I'm using the, uh, the Sony A7R Mark V, as well as Sony A7 IV. And if you're in 4K60, so if you're recording video and you're doing 4K60 video, it is unfortunately comes with a bit of a crop, it comes with a lot of a crop on the Sony A7 IV, and it comes with enough of a crop to be annoying on the A7R Mark V. That's a bit of a bummer. The A7R5, which I thought was going to be my main camera, I think it still is if I'm just doing photography or if I'm just doing video on a day. But when I'm doing hybrid photo video, to have a crop to, to see your field of view is a, a 50 or a 35. And then when you start recording video, it's drastically different in the high paced environment of trying to record a lot of content kind of at the same moment, a couple's walking down the, the aisle back towards you and you're taking those photos and you're switching to video and trying to record video. The A7R Mark V, in some instances, I don't know what the deal is. So it kept up some of the time. It was totally fine. Then I take a bunch of photos, the buffer would clear. And then other times it would not clear and it would kind of hang and go kind of slow. And because of that, I don't know if it's going to be my main hybrid camera for this year. My main hybrid camera of last year was the, uh, I guess I did use the a7 IV a lot, but I was recording in 1080, 60 frames per second. And then I also used the Canon R6. So the Canon R6 Mark II, now out, solves all the problems that were in the first one. The first one, uh, the original R6, overheated a lot. If you're out in a hot climate of some sort, it's a hot day, you're gonna overheat, um, at least the, the photography I never had a problem with, but in the video side of things, you would notice your timer creeping down every time you went to restart a video clip. It would be like, oh, I can do a, a five minute clip now. Great, oh cool, I can do a one minute video clip now. And at some point it would read zero and the camera just had to sit somewhere roughly cold and just do nothing for a bit, which was a bit annoying. Uh, as a wedding photographer, the workaround is that you would actually have two of them and you'd shoot one up until the ceremony and then you wouldn't touch the other one. And then at the ceremony, you would switch to the fresh camera and it was usually fine. That said, that's a bit of a ridiculous workaround. But with the Canon R6 Mark II, it seems like all those problems are solved. So the, the problems that I had for hybrid workflow, with the exception of one problem, but the one problem isn't really a problem, it's more of a marketing thing, uh, or I guess maybe not this time. Uh, so there's a physical switch to go between photo and video, which means that if you just hit the record button when you're in uh, photo mode, you go into automatic video recording which is a bit of a bummer. So you're recording at F8 or whatever the camera chooses. You don't get to choose white balance. It just kind of does what it wants in automatic video mode. 
on the original R6, this was an intentional, um, I'm going to say an in- intentional Canon hammer where they were like, you should buy the R5 if you want to run something like aperture priority video, or you want to be able to set something like 4K60 to your record button. So you're just able to easily record uh, when you're in photo mode. Now there's a physical switch. So it seems like it's a less intentional thing that you can't just map nice settings to that record button when you're in photo mode, but it still is a bit annoying. Switching photo to video mode, very easy. Um, It's on your left hand though. So it's a two handed process now to switch to video mode um, from photography. So workflow wise, I'm not going to say it's better or worse. I, it's kind of a wash. It's kind of the same. So instead of changing your little dial on the top from C3 or from manual settings to a uh, video mode, you're now just switching a switch on your left hand, which I guess is better, but still not perfect. The buffer on the Canon R6 Mark II clears very fast, even with slow cards. The Sony a7 IV also clears very fast as well. So if I am shooting hybrid on Sony, I will likely be on the Sony a7 IV. For the rest of my workflow, for the the content I'm doing here on YouTube, or for commercial work, or really anything else, I will be using the Sony a7R Mark V, but I don't think it's going to be my official hybrid camera of the year. And barring any other surprise releases from either of the brands, I will probably be spending a little bit of my hybrid time this year on the Canon R6 Mark II. Spoken to this in the past, the annoying thing with Canon is there are no third-party lenses, so you can't use that Tamron 35 to 150, which I want to use for every ceremony. So that's a bummer there. It feels like I'm going a little bit backwards in time when it comes to the fact that I now have to buy a 70 to 200 again, as well as a 50 or an 85 or 35 or whatever I'm going to be using. And that, to me, is a little bit sad. So it's going to be hard. I shot, I'm going to say, the last half of the season on the a7 IV, And I really, really enjoyed the experience of it. I think that in terms of the production quality I was giving to my couples, I think that it was better than it had been the previous year with the Canon R6, because it's just a little bit faster to switch between the two uh, from photo to video mode, as well as the versatility of the shots that I was able to get. So I will feel like I'm going a little bit backwards in time, but the benefit is that I will get to shoot 4K 60. But if you've ever seen a side-by-side comparison of 4K 60 footage versus 1080 upscaled, you might notice something interesting specifically when it comes to weddings is that people are probably going to look a little bit better in 1080 60 footage upscaled. It kind of somewhat, I guess it's not really accurate, but it kind of adds a mist filter a little bit to it. So if you're running 4k 60 footage and you have a mist filter in front of it, I'm going to say that that footage is going to be roughly weirdly comparable to 1080 60p upscaled, at least kind of in in my rough testing. Uh, Maybe I'll run a a more official test on that, but I like the look of 1080 footage upscaled to 4K. And I think that my couples, for the most part, they're all not models. Um, They are having professional makeup done most of the time, but they're not models. And I feel like the additional layer of kind of softening is a nice to have in a lot of cases. Obviously, 4K 60 footage is going to look better on a big monitor. But for the most part, people are watching these videos on their phones now. And I know it's not what our intended use is that we want them to watch it on a projector and rent a full theater for, for the first watch. But the truth of it is that most of the time they're going to be watching it on their phone. And when it comes to that, while it might not be the correct thing to do, I do feel like upscaling to 4K kind of, it feels, it, it looks good to me. I'm, I'm happy with the footage. So yeah, that's the challenge with doing a thing that camera brands really don't design cameras for. I'm happy that it's finally gotten to the point that they're accidentally creating buffers that clear fast enough for this to happen. For a long, long time, I could only shoot on Nikon DSLRs because they were the only ones that cleared the buffer fast enough to switch to video mode quickly. I'm happy that all the brands now have a camera that's fast enough, but I'm sad that the usability just kind of isn't there yet or the 4K 60 crop still exists on some of the bodies. So we'll see what comes out this year. I was hoping that CES this year would create some sort of magical solution to this, but unfortunately, CES has passed and there was no announcement. But at the end of the day, we're still creating with tools that are 20 times as good as we had five years ago (laughs) in terms of video and photography. So be thankful that you can run autofocus in video and it's actually good now because for a long time it wasn't it wasn't fun and it wasn't good. And your footage looking back at my older films, it's not out of focus, but it's a lot of it's pretty soft. Maybe that that's the mist filter. My missed filter is just missing focus by a few centimeters. Thanks for watching this bonus episode, this Friday bonus. And uh, if you are coming to Imaging USA in Nashville this week, 
there is a link in the show notes or on the YouTube video if you're watching this on YouTube. And I will hopefully see you there. Other things that are happening, WPPI is on March, I think it's like 6 to 10, 6 to 9, something like that. Um, we'll be there. We'll be doing some things. If you're there and you want to come early on March, this isn't announced yet, but on March 4th, a few days before WPPI, or maybe one day before, we're actually going to be doing another kind of mini not a conference where we go out to the desert. We have permits for Red Rocks Canyon, which is awesome, as well as another spot. And we'll be bringing couples and you can come and shoot portfolio. It'll be myself there for sure. Uh, Carolyn Tran as well. And perhaps a surprise guest that we're working on. We'll see how it works out because to ask somebody to come two days early for WPPI when they're going to be there for like a full week in Vegas is a big commitment. Um, and then beyond that, a few weeks after March 20th and 21st, I will be, I think maybe the 21st, 22nd, I'll put links to this in the show notes. Uh, I'll be in Brighton followed by Glasgow later in that week. So the 23rd and 24th, we are in Glasgow at a conference called Photography Farm Thrive. And then I'm home for a few weddings and then we go to Iceland for a hybrid workshop in April. Um, that one is sold out. There is a bit of a wait list and Cole and I are thinking about doing another one. Um, we can potentially do one the last week of June, which might be too tight, I think, at this point. Or we can do one maybe later in the fall. Um, put your name, maybe send Cole a message and get on the waiting list for that if you are interested because it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun. One thing there is still tickets for, there are, I think, 18 tickets still available for our Focal Hawaii Not a Conference 2.0. So this is the full full size version. Nashville is kind of like a point 1.2, and then we'll call WPPI a 1.6, and then the full 2.0 release of Not a Conference is in Hawaii the first week of May. So if you're interested in coming out to Hawaii the first week of May, or I guess maybe the last days of April also, if you want to make a longer trip, um, we're going to set up a bunch of shoots for you. And Sam Hurd's going to be there. Scott Robert Lim, Carolyn Tran again, myself, Nicole Ashley, my wife, Lindsay. We'll all be there and it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun. We have a really cool spot for that. So yeah, links below if you want to come to the Focal uh, Conference 2.0 in Hawaii. 1.0 was in Banff and it was amazing. 2.0, the weather's going to be even warmer, which is nice. Banff was great. It was a little chilly, some of the shoots, some of the mornings. Hawaii, you just get that comfortable weather that's just nice all the time. Thanks for listening. See you again next time.